On this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, we're making a stop to Iowa to visit with Scott Buckley. Scott moved to Iowa from Michigan to hunt bigger whitetails on public land. Join along as he recounts some of his most memorable hunts over the years. If you enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. If you or someone you know would like to be featured on Whitetail Cribs, head to the link in the comments and apply to be featured on the show. Now let's get into the episode. The Exodus team is traveling around the United States to take a look inside the trophy rooms of some of the most interesting whitetail hunters in the country. From giant bucks, unique racks, and riveting stories, welcome to Whitetail Cribs. Come on in, guys. Nice seeing you. Welcome to my crib. Scott Buckley here. <laughs> yep. Come on in. We'll go down the basement first. Okay, this is um, where a lot of my animals are down here that I've got over the years. I guess we'll start out. Um, first deer I ever got. When I was 14 years old, me and my dad, little six-pointer I got up in Michigan. Here's the house I built in Michigan. I originally come from Michigan. I've been in Iowa 12 years. That was my hardest thing about leaving Michigan was um, built that home, raised my kids in it. <clears throat> and, um, yep, it was hard leaving that, but the trade-off was good. Came out where there was a lot of big deer. That's what, when I came to Iowa, I said, you know, I'm not going to build another big fancy house. And I bought this place and got 23 acres here. And, um, and then I just saved and worked my butt off for years. And I bought me a 240 acre farm, Southern Iowa, and um, got a little place on that. And we'll be going there in a couple days seeing that one. But this is a hunt my grandpa went on in Iran back in the 70s. He shot um, seven different sheep and ibex, and that was kind of the prize was the ibex he got. You couldn't go to Iran, I don't think, these days, but back in the day he did. And, uh, the Iranians give him this hat here as kind of like a gift. I guess it's supposed to resemble a rock or something, camouflage back then, but... Um, yeah, pretty interesting. My gra my grandpa's where I got, I think it's still a lot of my hunting um, in, in me. He's been gone now for quite a few years, but he was a super guy. Um, on to the Ted Nugent Metrobilia. I shot this, the picture, me and Ted, and um, that was back in, I think, 93 probably. Went hunting with Ted Nugent uh, on one of his um, um, farms he had and um shot that wild boar that was excellent hunt he um put me on one of his brochures i thought that was pretty cool um picture me and ted and my daughter when she was she's like 26 now and that's her when she was just just a little little snot right there but this is a caribou hunt i went on in northern quebec with ted nugent and bob fulcrod back in i think 90 96 i think it was and then you got over here back when i was young through my 20s 30s i used to shoot a lot of archery every weekend we was at a different shoot outdoor 3d shoots um indoor shoots in the winter and this is a elk hunt here um only time I ever went elk hunting, I always wanted to bow hunt, but my dad was going. There's a picture of my, the three of us. That was us standing over the Grand Canyon. My dad, you know, he was the age where he did a little bit of bow hunting when he was younger, but, um, you know, not on that kind of, um, you know, not on an elk hunt. So we decided to apply for gun tags in, in Arizona, um, up around Flagstaff area. I think everybody said it took a long time to draw them. I think we got draw within two years, and we ended up um, going with U.S. Outfitters. Me and my dad both took nice, you know, they're not huge elk, but it was my first elk, and he got an elk. I got one, and my brother, he didn't get one, but it was it was a great time, and I'd like to go back out again someday. It's just since I bought that property down south, a lot of my 
trips out of state kind of slowed down. I spent so much time on my property, but and this is just an old ratty gray fox I trapped one year. The taxidermy isn't the best on it, but <laughs> I don't remember who did it. And these are just some deer that I've, when I was younger, and, and I kind of, I started migrating out of Michigan because the area we was in in Michigan, if you if you shot a 100-inch deer, it was, you know, a trophy. They, they come, they were few and far between. But I started kind of migrating down to Ohio. We hunted southern Ohio quite a bit. A um, few of these are Ohio. You can see the metal tags on them. I used to hunt southern Ohio, Vinton County, um, Muskegon County. That's an Ohio deer. This is a Michigan deer when I was younger. Um, that's Ohio, Ohio, Michigan. I have another Michigan deer up at a friend's house in Michigan, the same caliber. But that's kind of where I got, you know, my teeth when I first got the deer hunt. Well, I always had a deer hunting bug, but when I first started killing something bigger than a yearling buck is is you know then most of these are two-year-old bucks that's hundred to some inch bucks a little bit of my kitchen down here if i ever have guests they can um, come down to the kitchen and they can stay down here or whatever. In fact, if any anybody, I'm always looking for workers for my construction company. If you guy, if you ever young guy thinking about coming out, maybe I could let you stay down if you come to work for me and shoot some big deer in Iowa. But this is about it for the basement here. I'll head upstairs. This would be a mountain lion I got on a hunt to Idaho. It was a great hunt. There's me and my mountain man picture right there with lion over my back. Um, these two deer, public land, 2015 I think it was. Um, shot him early muzzleload season. Um, this one, there's a picture of him up there if you could see that. But that one I got early season, October 3rd. Um, Went into a uh, spot on public land, and and in the morning, it was cold that morning, real frosty morning, and, and I don't hunt a lot early season in the morning, but I knew with it being that it was abnormally cold, a cold front that blew in, and I figured they might be, you know, coming in late to bed, and, and I got way back in on a finger, and he worked his way he come up from the ag fields down below about 8 20 in the morning i won't forget it and he come working up that that finger and and i think a 25 yard shot and heard him crash and you know 170 inch deer uh, none of the if i say scores none of them are you know none of them been scored set by me so give or take an inch or two or whatever but I think he was, you know, a little over 170, and oh yeah, one of his sheds, I found that, I knew he was in there, I had pictures of him a couple of years, we found his shed, um, and it was, it, it was cool, there was a hole, it's kind of hard to see, or something like, but there was a hole in his shed horn I found, well, and that while we were shed hunting that same area, I found an arrow back in there, and we, back in that woods where I shot, you know, from the year before, or when we were shed hunting, and I put the arrow it fit right in that hole right there, and so we figured somebody, you know, winged him in the horn, and we found the arrow, and, you know, the shed was a few hundred yards away, but, yeah, some un unlucky hunter, and then I killed him the following year, but I think it was a muzzy broadhead, if I remember. This buck my boy got on the farm, they estimated it at 10 years old, um, first year we had the farm, and you see is there's his the body on him was just just tremendous i mean biggest deer we never weighed him it was it was warm out and um we just immediately you know started working on him so we didn't lose him but he shot him early muzzleload season and and um just giant of a deer but yeah he that thing came in i think what 15 yards away from cody and he put shot him with a muzzleloader and went down and um 
that was, I've never seen him so excited. That kid was stoked right up. And those are some sheds, a couple. It was the first year we had the farm, so we found one of them that spring from the year before. But a couple of the neighbors gave us other ones that they had found, you know, over the years of that deer. This is a bow, Bob Fulcrod, a friend of mine that I've known for years, hunted caribou with them, and he asked me this year if I'd like to shoot a Martin bow. I've always shot Matthews, and and I said, sure, Bob, I would be, you know, honored. They sent me some of the stuff on all my specs and, and um, put in for it, and I love it. It's it's a, just an awesome shooting bow, and um, I didn't get a deer with it this year. First year, I haven't killed a deer in, in Iowa in 12 years, but um, great bow, and I really appreciate Bob asking me to, you know, shoot with them so that's the buck i got around here my old rental when i first came to iowa i shot him out back found his sheds the year before um younger deer three-year-old deer but when i first came out you know i i shot a couple three-year-olds that first couple years and because i wasn't used to deer like that out in michigan and um he was i got him right on the rental property and the big brows he just you know, he looks amazing. Pile of sheds, we've got most of these ones at this place are public land deer. Not all of them, but a vast majority of these are public. Um, a bear, this is one of the, probably one of the first hunts I ever went on out of, uh, I don't know, I consider big game hunts or whatever. When I was young, we went to Ontario. Uh, my cousin, neighbor, me, um, I ended up killing that bear up in Ontario. In fact, it was, I can't remember, Timmins, Ontario, maybe. It was a town, town Shania Twain was from. I always thought that was cool. That's about the time she was, they said she was playing in the bars and stuff back then, you know, about the time I shot that bear. I wish I had a node back then it'd be cool to check her out before she got big but this is another buck i got on that private piece a few miles from here <clears throat> um nice buck i got with my bow pretty much all these i've got in here are bow except for that one with the muzzleloader this is a bear my boy got saskatchewan this year this was his first big game hunt outside deer i took him to saskatchewan a year ago and um we both got bears. Mine's down at my farmhouse, and that was pretty exciting. I filmed him shooting it, and it was on a TV show, Maximum Outdoors, and um, pretty exciting stuff. It was it was super cool. We've seen numerous bears, and just watching my boy, um, you know, participate in that was so cool and awesome. And this is a buck my boy got out front here. I think first year or two where we were here, that was his biggest deer at the at the time. A um, little picture of it there. And, yeah, got it with a bow. I think it was the day before Thanksgiving or right around here. My parents were in from from Michigan, and they were here to, you know, see his, see his deer, and it was pretty neat. Numerous sheds here. I think most of these were public. I know that was a big one I was hunting two years ago. He was... The year after that, he was 180 some inch deer, and um, yep, never, never seen him, but had lots of pictures of him. Um, that was another public land, big, tall, eight pointer. I was hunting that one time, and he was quite old. Some of these deer I had pictures of for two, three years. And North American Whitetail magazines, I've been a member of them for since I was a kid, probably 20 some years old. Um, I wish I'd have collected all of them. A lot of them I threw away over the years, and I realize they're they're pretty, you know, collector items. I I've been in a featured in a couple of them. They did a feature article on that one right there. Um, one of the magazines there did an article, and then me and Zach um, Fairball from the Hunting Public, we was we was in another article. One of them they they featured us, did a little segment on um, public land hunting too. So that was kind of neat. That deer skin's one of my, I think that's my boy's first deer, maybe. Not 100% positive, but walk into the bedroom. This is where all the magic happens in here, I guess. <laughs> um, 
my workbench. That's where I get all my big muscles from. So got to keep in shape when I'm 50 years old. 50, 53 going on. Um, but yeah, that's it. My grandson over here. Yeah, he's my pride and joy there. There's my grandson. He's... Oh, we'll be, you'll be meeting him this weekend when we go film the farmhouse. He's just the coolest little kid in the world. He's, he's going to go out shed hunting. And Nope, that's about it for this room. My kitchen. I even got deer heads in my kitchen since I'm a bachelor. I can do that. <laughs> um, big one I got on a piece of private property. That's over my first rental when I moved out here. That deer was probably the biggest body deer that I'd ever killed. Same thing, I was never much into weighing deer, but I, just a giant of a deer. The muscles on them, was, it was just huge. Um, that was another public land buck, double drop tine. That was the first year I moved to Iowa. I shot him on public land with a bow and arrow. Pretty much, pretty much all these are bow and arrow, I think. October 31st, day after Halloween, or somewhere right around there, I got him down in public. That was another public land deer. In fact, that one was off the ground. I was sitting in a tree stand all day way back in, and I kept seeing all these bucks like 150 yards away. Kind of take around in this one corner in the woods, this kind of terrain feature that was there. So finally, I got tired of watching all these bucks. I seen an oak tree over there laid down that fell down and big, big oak. And I went and snuck behind that. And as I was settling in, this is, I think, 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I looked down and I could see him standing down there. I tucked in there, got back in. I couldn't see him after that, but I wasn't there 10 minutes. And here comes a, a 138 point walking by me right in front of me. I thought, wow, if this continues, you know, I should get a shot at something. And he never seen me. I was behind this big blowdown. I don't know, an hour later, here he comes walking by 25 yards. I, I um, grunted. And shot him off the ground, watched him crash out too. That's 160 inch deer right there. Um, that one was that one was close. I think that was just over 170, and that one was high 150s over there. And this is my kitchen. Um, basically, you know, same old fridge. Always got alcohol. Anybody wants one? <laughs> always full of venison that's one thing we eat. we eat a lot of it our main diet is venison big deer on public land iowa that deer was another 170 inch deer shot him early muzzleload season on a cold front he come um sitting in a tree stand when all it was a cold front coming in most of these early muzzled hunts in iowa they're usually the second third week of october during the october law when you know when it's pretty tough hunting big deer but if you get them on a cold front and get close to their bed he came right out of a bedding area out of a cedar thicket i was right on top of it i mean within yards and he came out and yep put him down it was one of my better bucks at the time i don't remember the year but Oh, here's some cool pictures. This is um, my grandpa and grandma, black and white. I don't know the year. My grandma used to hunt pheasants. They got a bunch of pheasants that day, and that dog's name was probably Duke. And that's a picture one of my relatives gave me here recently. I think it's from 1934, if I remember correctly. That's my great-grandpa Snook. I remember him. He passed away when I was 20. This is another buck here. Got him on public land. 160 inch eight point my biggest eight point middle of november he come running in chase there was like two three bucks hot on a doe they come out of some private land and i was i don't know 75 yards off the border and they come running out of this cedar thicket and i was right there he run right under my stand i was in in a big oak tree and he they just come plowing under me and i couldn't get a shot and they stopped about 43 yards away. At the time, it was the longest shot I ever took at a buck. I've shot does that far. But yeah, I ended up, he was standing there and, and drilled him. And I don't know, 100 yards later, we recovered him too. And these are some cool pictures. These are the bucks my kids got this year. They both got really big A-pointers on my farm down south. Early muzzleload season. 
super exciting. A friend of mine, Steve Noble from Maximum Outdoors, he filmed it for his TV show. It will be out this fall on the Pursuit Channel. He was filming my daughter, just awesome footage. And I filmed my son, and um, it was just the best evening ever. They both shot him the same evening, about two hours apart. We were sitting on, they, my daughter was sitting on a clover plot, and my son, we, me and him were sitting on a turnip plot. And um, super exciting. Here's a cool picture before I kick you guys out of here of my dad. My dad does everything to me. I, this is the first year he hasn't come out shed hunting in He's 78 years old. He just it didn't work out where my brother and them could make it out. Um, but yeah, they've been out here the last three years shed hunting this week. And but I'll I'll head home a couple months and see him. But that's about it, guys. It's time to get out. I'll um I'll see you guys in a couple days down at my farm for part two, and we'll do some shed hunting to be continued.